Welcome back to RimWorld. So before we get into today's episode, there's just a couple of things I wanted to talk about first things first and explain why the map looks very slightly different. So last episode I installed a mod, I don't remember what it was, it was like haul to stack or, or pick up and haul or something like that. And that was causing a lot of conflict with other mods we had enabled. So I've started a clean map here and it's basically identical to what we had before, right? The only difference is... Um, the factions and dynamic objects are going to be slightly different to what we had last time. So, um, we're in exactly the same place, on exactly the same world. It's just the factions will have moved around somewhat, just to try and avoid some issues. So, that's only things in regard to the series that I really need to point out. Uh, besides that, research is in exactly the same place. Um, you know, the, the characters are more or less the same. The only thing I had to do was spawn in a Jimbo and a dog. But I created some random characters until we had two that were very, very similar. So the dog, again, good with plants, good with cooking. Um, apparently has a high passion for crafting, but it's only got one skill, so it doesn't matter too much. Jimbo, uh, this character wasn't particularly too similar to previous Jimbo, but they have the backstory of Dragon Hunter, and that made me laugh so much that obviously I kept this boy around instead. So you got yourself a Jimbo and a dog. Everything else, though, identical. We've still got a fancy rock, we've still got a fancy farm. So, a lot of you have been having issues with the actual load order of this mod, so at the end of this episode, I will go and show you guys my load list. A lot of you getting a, a shit ton of errors that I have no idea why, because I myself have had really no issues with this pack at all, besides installing some mods that broke everything last episode, but that's um, a different story. That's that's me fucking around, not, not an issue with the inherent collection. One thing I have noticed, though, is on the collection page... Despite the fact that I manually reordered everything, it's still in a different order to my own personal load order that I copied when I was manually reordering it. Steam's collection system is really, really shitty. Like, I can't even edit some of the CK2 collections I've put up before. So, just, I don't know, just for posterity's sake here, I'll go through the error log and show you that. Actually, I really don't get any errors at all. Um, we've got some here, which are to do with quarries. Three errors thrown by the quarry mod happens every single time. It's just an issue with the quarry. Um, we've got one there, cannot find electric stove because the stoves have been removed. And then same again, cannot find sterile materials package survival meals because we've used a mod to remove them. Besides that though, we're getting no persistent gameplay mods. That's just after the initial loading. So as we play here, um, there's nothing else wrong with, you know, what's happening. So, um, very weird that there's so much glitches and errors, but hopefully at the end of the video, we can work through that together and you guys can copy my load order and my mod list directly and see what we've got going on. Now I have removed some mods as well. I mentioned this in Discord, and I sort of talked about it a little bit in Discord, that I kind of wanted to simplify the experience a little bit. Although I wasn't getting errors, you guys apparently were. So I've removed some of the non-essential mods, some of the flavor mods that weren't really doing much, just so that, uh, just to try and, you know, reduce the chance of more issues cropping up there. So, what's the plan? Finish smithing as soon as goddamn possible, so we can actually make some steel, and then we can actually get ready for this, play the game. Still a big fan of, oh, the road's changed. Look at that. The road's completely different now. And the blocks have come back. You might remember this was all, uh, from whatever reason, from one of the mods that we installed. Um, we had... I'll do it with that mad squirrel in a minute, thank you. We had, um, a lot of missing blocks going on, but no, they've actually respawned. And then, of course, we've actually got a big main road here as well. That looks a lot nicer than that previous road we have. I mean, that's a really nice road, too. That's cool. Right, so what are we get in the ship being now was by a squirrel. Of course we wouldn't. I'm gonna assume, uh, none of our boys have any weapons anymore, eh? No, that's fine. So basically, it's more or less a, flesh, a fresh slate here with what we've built. So get to work uh, punching this squirrel to death. I'm going to need everyone on this just in case we get uh, a pretty bad infection or something like that. Thank you guys who have been explaining how some of these mod works. I've seen the recommendation to get a druid 100,000 times. Apparently, they're, they're just basically like a medic, but better in every way, right? So I will focus on that as soon as we can. If we get any medics turn up, I'll, I will prioritize maybe trying to bring them over, even if we do piss some people off. One of you pointed out that apparently Diz Waltney turned up in a caravan. I didn't even notice him. That's one thing I've got to remember to keep an eye out for any visitors we get. See what they've actually... See who's traveling with them. See if we can spot, you know, Elrang, Everqueen. Apparently Diz Waltney. Um, that's really cool that we actually saw one of the characters and I completely ignored it. But it's, it's cool to know they're out there in the world. So, smithing. How are we looking? Probably about four-fifths. Probably about five-sixths of the way there, to be honest with you. Um, tomorrow, I'm hopefully... We can finish that. What else have we got then? So we've got... The research tree has actually changed them up because it's all reinitialized in the right order this time. Um, got some dwarf stuff. Portals. I never noticed that one last time. That's really cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. A powerful artifact that enables instant travel between colonies. So one of you even said, have other colonies that act as like vassal states. With something like that, that sounds like it'd be 
awesome. You know, have a standing, have a big colony, like, just for an army. And then have them teleport to different other colonies. Or we could have one colony dedicated to farming, send caravans of food over to the main city. That would be, uh, that's such a cool idea. I, I love this idea of multiple colonies. Basically, what I wanted to do with last series, except it makes a bit more sense this time around, right? With all these sort of feudal societies bound down to the one true king, Lord Bonnet Bigley. King Bonnet Bigley to you guys, but Lord Bonnet Bigley. King of Pirates? I never realized that was his backstory. King of Pirates. Firefighting, cooking, art, butchering. Was that the right backstory? I mean, it's got to be, because I, I haven't changed him at all. He's exactly the same as we last saw him, so that's so strange. He's a king of the pirates. He wants to be king. Yayo, yayo. I mean, a pretty fitting, considering the current CK2 campaign as well, that we would have a pirate king. So we are running a bit low on food, actually. I'd like to get that dealt with as soon as possible. So we do have uh, the river, or the, the, the lake is a little bit closer this time around. So like I said, the dynamic thing sort of spawned in slightly differently. So different lakes, different roads. Besides that, all the blocks are in the same place, thank God. The river is closer, but it's a lot, lot smaller, so we get a lot less shellfish traps. Kind of a bit of a pain. Um, it means we have to do more dedicated... Sorry, Chief Angered, why? Um, the Federation of Vanium never heard back from the delegation. Oh, shit. They're the wizards that we were trying to keep friendly, weren't they? Apparently, there was a peace or, or some sort of delegation, a talk happening, and we completely ignored it. Well, that's completely my own fault. I apologize for that. It's probably while I've setting everything back up. It's happening in the background. Anyway, we've got food. What is that? We've, what is this? Elephant spear? I don't know where that's come from, but I'm a big fan of that. And we've also got Unrefined Magicite. So who's our best fighter then? Um, melee stat, to be honest. King Bonnet's going to be hard to beat here. I don't want the king fighting in battle, though. Honestly, Patches, you've got the second highest melee stat. The king does not put himself in harm's way. Someone puts himself between the king and harm's way. So we're going to have Jason Bourne there with his spear. Thank God we've done this new save now. We can actually clean the base. Look at this. Holy shit. 10 out of 10. Thank you for that. Man, that was a good idea to do that. So... Food prep station, we don't have anything for. We'll, we want to look at the smokehouse, don't we? So we've still got the same bills. Yeah, everything's good to go. So under the medieval tab, what was it I was trying to build? We wanted to build a crafting station. That was going to be the important one. That is hopefully going to allow us to make some of these storage pots and in turn make some ice so we can actually keep things under wraps here. Can we put a quarry down anywhere convenient just so we can get some raw resources without having to stray too far from the base? While we're quite a small colony without weapons... Generally, if we get raided, we're going to need everybody punching the same dude. We're just going to have to whale him and try and outnumber him. Um, so if we can get Quarry nearby... Oh man, there's Quarry right in our farm. Oh, there's Quarry Valeri right in our farm. Put one on the other side of the Holy Rock, of course. Um, oh man, there's a lot of good resources nearby here. Hey, we could put one right next to the stop pile and put a door sort of around the back here. That's a good plan. You know, let's do that. Let's have a Quarry then set up ready to feed us resources here. I can't wait till we can get this steel. Holy shit, it's really going to open the game up. So, after that, I'm thinking we go for maybe recurve bows. Probably not a bad plan. Plate armor as well. I love that we can make thrombo plate armor. That's so good. Dwarven armors. Um, the magic stuff is so good, but that's, that's going to be a very long time before it's worth going for that. What if we make elven weapons? A lot of the most simplistic elven weapons. Mirkwood elf bow. Um, it's less research than actually re researching the regular recurve bows. I don't know whether we need a special sort of material for that, though. Kuduk. Hobbit tools. Pitchfork. Ankle biter axe. Well, it's better than nothing, eh? Um, might be worth trying some of these different ones, then, for a, for a change. Hobbit doors. Oh, man, that's so cool. I'm a big fan of this Lord of the Rings mod. Originally, I was just going to make it a medieval one, but I'm kind of glad one of you on Discord told me about this one instead, because I completely missed it during my initial search. Oh. Is that why they're angry at us? Because Aleski Kepe Vanitin is apparently un or, or flailing around because he has a potion addiction and a withdrawal from it? Maybe that's why our points went down. Because I was going to say, I don't remember them giving us any missions. I mean, I only played for like a couple of minutes to get everything set up. So this is kind of... Fuck's sake. Of course they would send us a dude who's got an addiction and then pass out in the base. Um... Can we treat him at all? He's got malnutrition because obviously he can't feed himself. Well, Alright, let's put down a spot to actually get this guy back up to full health then. Um, here, let oh, you know what? Let's build him a bed. Let's try and get him off the map healthy so at least they don't completely hate us. Who's our best builder? Oh, it's Patches. He's digging the quarry. Patches, come and build this one for us. Um, rescue Cape. Hello, Cape. Are you any good? Could we get you for ourselves? He's good at mining. Honestly, is it worth pissing off the wizards though for this dude who's okay? He shared a word about fat animals with pots. Thank you for that one. Um, you know what? Let's get this boy healed up. Have we got ourselves a doctor? We do. Pots of Corrupt Alchemist. Feeding simple meal to Cafe. There we go. Okay, we should be good then. All right. You healthy? So the second we can get this boy out of our map, the better. I think the malnutrition is definitely... So, mana addiction withdrawal. 
Pain times 800%. Jesus. He should be able to move once his malnutrition has worn off. Unless he's going to have to stay here for the entire withdrawal. That would be ridiculous. I really don't have to deal with this dude for that long. Holy shit. Our first raid. Here we go. A group of bandit dwarfs from the dwarf bandits. Of <laughs> a group of. A single bandit dwarf. Right, so he's got apparently some training. So let's take a look at this one. So it's under the health tab. Racial bonus dwarf. Right, so there we go. Blood filtration, mining yield, mining. That's cool. Man, I never thought about setting up like a specific dwarf or elf colony. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at this dude. He's a death knight. What does that mean? So he's only good at fighting. That's cool. Um, shooting plus 14. Melee plus 15. I'm not a big fan of this dude. Uh, male dwarf thief. Age 102. We might lose someone here. He's got himself an iron dwarf axe of infinity. Oh, God. This does bring a smile to my face. What does that do? Um... Global learning speed? <laughs> oh, right. Okay, it's, it's an artifact. So we could just equip it to Bonnet. And it would help improve the... the... Okay, well, that's kind of cool. I kind of want to take this dude alive, you know? He's so good. He would make such a good guardian for the base. Um, the only issue is we have one weapon. And that's what Patches has. If we all wail on him at once, I think we'll be fine. As long as Patches gets in there and then we all just try and punch him to death. And, you know, more chance of taking him alive that way as well. Where is he? All right, Nolly? Look, come here. Right, Patch is getting there first. Um, they're not set to... Okay, they are drafted, so we should be good. That's it. Head over. Get Bonnet at the back. Surround him, boys. Go, go, go. Okay. We're in. Punch him. Wail on him, team. This is working. He hasn't done much damage yet. Oh, we managed to dodge one. He's down. Holy shit. Right. This axe is so good as well. That's a legendary enchantment, so that's, that's so good for us. Bonnet, grab the axe. All right, we're fine. The dog took a little bit of damage. He had his cut, his toe cut off. He cut the foot and sliced straight through a toe. Patches is fine, just a, just a bruise. So I'm trying to work out what to prioritize here. Yeah, we definitely need to prioritize Pots. Rick Pots. <laughs> I love that so much. This dwarven trained warrior is like, oh, it's just a few men. I'll deal with them. They'll just surround him and wail on him. <laughs> what a great fight. Okay, shit. Let's get back, team. Um, do we want to capture him? I mean, uh, we at least want to strip him, if nothing else. Because I assume he's got some... No, he's just got a regular tunic and some cloth pants. Fine, let's try and capture him then. Um, this is now our prison, as per usual. Mainly because its walls are mostly stone. So if he wants to break out, it might give us a few more seconds. Um, Doggy needs to go to bed. Right, he, he is, isn't he, right? Oh, does he even have a bed? Patches, Jimbo, Pots. Dog doesn't have a bed. Right, so let's build him a sleeping spot. Um, furniture. Let's go sleeping spot. Generally, you know what? You can you can sit in this room. You can, you can share with... Kepe. There we go. Alright. Um, everybody else should be fine, though. What about Noli? So, Jimbo captured Noli. Because he's not our, you know... Wait, is Jimbo our... What is Jimbo good at? Yeah, no, he, he's not doing anything important right now. I was going to say if he's got, like, cooking or something to do, I'd rather not him. But that's fine. Um, Patches needs to be healed up soon as possible. Potts is, of course, the doctor. So, we need to set him to self-tend. That's definitely something I would have forgotten about if I hadn't double-checked there. Set him to self-tend. Then we'll actually make sure that he tends to our colonists first and then Nolly before he goes and gets in bed rest. Right, tend to pots. After that, tend to patches. After that, tend to the dog. And after that, tend to Nolly. Hopefully, we can get this boy on our side because he's going to make a hell of a warrior. If we can get him, I think future raids have got really something to worry about there. All right, everybody should be good. It was, it was a minor... It's, it's nothing really to worry about. Oh, good treatment as well there. Same with Patches. Great treatment for Patches. And Noli, as long as we can keep him alive. Death in five hours. A lot of the a lot of the punching is, is really what knocked him down there. Only a couple of severe hits. Nice. Okay, sweet. He's got hatred. What does that mean? Hate. Is that going to make him very difficult to recruit, I assume? Uh, no, apparently not. Recruitment difficulty, 30% and 11 resistance. So his, his hatred is apparently quite shallow. Recruit him. Get him on board. We can force him to work because of the prison labor mod. I think that's what broke it, you know. Um, an elf musician named Narhorn, nor Narthon, welcome Narthon, Rivendell elf bow, is it worth trying to fight him and take him down? Probably not, I mean if he's just passing by, you don't really want to make enemy with elves, I feel like they've got some quite powerful gear that we don't really want to fuck with too much. That's so good that we've got Bonnets, this increasing, <laughs> incredible axe here, 118% research speed, it's not much of a bonus, but it's better than nothing, right, an extra 20% on top, essentially. Learning factor is up as well, so he's going to become a much more skilled character as time goes on. Work speed is up. That's pretty good. And the, just it's such a good artifact. We really lucked out with that one. We'll make this dude another weapon, assuming we can obviously get him on board with things. Patches. 
Should you not be in bed resting? Oh, man, he healed very quickly, eh? Let's, let's build the dog an actual bed, then. Have we got enough wood left for that? Yeah, we've got 600 wood. Let's go ahead. Structure and oh, furniture. Wooden bed. Let's, let's at least build a spare one, I guess. Um, not a big fan of having our colonists just lying on the floor. Went to heal up, especially as that dude took the most damage as well. Right, heal him up. Oh, wait, was it as much as Pots? Oh, no, wait, Pots really got done in. Oh, he was the one. Right, okay, so Dog just lost a toe. Yeah, it was me thinking that he lost a whole foot, but no, he's actually fine. Right, get rid of that. Um, can he walk? He can walk. There we go. Get, get yourself a meal, then go lie in bed for a bit. A bow? Hang on. Where the shit did that come from? Who's good at shooting, then? Uh, 4.6, 4.21, 5.3... 1.3. Um, I guess Jimbo version 2 gets himself a bow. Well, luckily only another 12%, and then we might actually be able to get rid of Kepe here. Kep. Um, I hope we get some racial bonus for actually looking after this dude for this long. Or at least some points with those guys for looking after this big shit for so long. That'd be so good. I've, it's kind of annoying that we've we've lost our faction relation with them, so that'd be kind of a nice way to, uh, to increase it again. This dude already down to 9.9. .9. Bonnet there, really working him over. My god, I can't... If we can recruit a Death Knight of all things, a Dwarven Death Knight to our colony, that's such a good story. Right, let's get all of this area claimed, because apparently I forgot to do that. Um, claim button, thank you very much. Right, there we go, so that counts as home area. I don't really want to claim much else there. So, apparently with the Plasteel, you guys are saying that we really can't do anything with it. Um, because it's, you know, an endgame tech, and there's there's no reason to do that. So, we can just keep it around for worship. I'd, I'd have liked to have built him, like, a Plasteel weapon or something. Or also a plasteel crown would have been very, very... Oh, wait, Patches has nothing to do. Really? Well, congratulations, Patches. You've just basically signed yourself up for the quarry there, my friend. Um, we'll put it to number four, then. There we go. All right, so in the quarry, for those of you who haven't seen, who, who have only recently started watching, the quarries have a particular percentage. There's a random chance you'll get some stuff from... Oh, God, we got steel from it. Yeah, okay, so apparently the quarry hasn't been affected by the whole iron conversion mod. Makes our lives a little bit easier, though. I mean, once we convert anyway, who cares? There's so much iron kicking around on this map. Okay, that's a little bit shitty. I might need to rebalance the quarry then, in that case. Okay, there we go. So I've rebalanced the quarry a little bit so that we have only iron from it now. And the highest ch chance is to get iron. We can rarely get some silver. We can rarely get some gold. And there's a very small chance of getting jade as well. So we should get now iron rather than the full-blown steel. Although, we might be able to put the steel... I'm keeping that steel. Okay, that's mine now. Um, oh, man, there's so much now. I'm really glad we did this fresh day. That was that was a good shout. Okay, Blacksmith Smelter uh, does nothing for us. We've still got to wait for fucking smithing, haven't we? Look, we're almost there. Five episodes of work. We are almost done with it. Thank God. He's up and he's gone. You're welcome. You are welcome, wizards. I cured the addiction of one of your men. I, I, again, I really, really hope that we get some points for that. Otherwise, I'm going to be pretty livid. Hey, this is great. Research, almost done. My God, please finish that. Hey, there we go. Kepe exited the map healthy. We are now up to plus 10 with them. Thank God for that. That was that was definitely beneficial then, setting all of that up for him. I am building another bedroom uh, for the dog as well, seeing as this is now basically just permanently a prison, right? So we might as well build him a fresh bedroom there. Patch is quickly getting on with that one. Sh shouldn't take more than a f couple of seconds there. Bonnet. Bonnet, please. It's so close to being finished. So what we're going to do next then is probably the, the, the best question. Um, long blades, plate armor might not be a bad idea. I imagine it reduces movement somewhat. Um, do we have any armor around that I can actually... Oh, wait, Bonnet's got plate armor. Let's take a look at that. Um, so, gear. Let's take a look at his royal plate armor. So, it does reduce move speed. So, I might not... I'm not a huge fan of that. But if we get into a lot of melee combat, you'd imagine that plate armor would be... Almost essential. Oh, man. I, I think weapons still have to come first, right? It, what's, what's a good plate armor if we actually can't fight back at all? It's, okay, it's going to take them longer to crack us over the head, but eventually they will do it. Um... Yeah, weapons first then. What do we want? Long blades. Do we want to go for do we want to go for bows so we can actually do some hunting? We're looking for elven weaponry even. Um the elves are upon you. Unlocks weapons worthy of the firstborn of Middle Earth. Gives us fancy bows. You know, I'm gonna do that. Um I, th I think we'll take a thousand points for that research, seeing as to get um blades, it's gonna be one thousand six hundred to get bows one thousand six hundred. So we might as well get crappy weapons rather than wasting about four years um to get one weapon type of each one. Nice. Rice harvest is done as well. This is so good. Oh, heat wave. Shit. Uh, heat waves can kill quickly if people start getting heat strokes. Stay cool or build a cooler. Okay, sure. That could be an issue. Um, seeing as we still don't have research finished. Bonnet. Oh, right. He's trying to get the dwarf. That's understandable. What does that mean? The the, the face with the arrow. I'm going to assume it implies that we're improving opinion. Improving relationship with this particular character. Something along those lines. Um, as it is a happy face going up there. Can only assume that. 5.8. We'll have this dude in no time. 
Like, genuinely, I think one more day and we might have him. So the house is now done, and that belongs to... Oh, God, the bed's different, seriously. I think I reinstalled his old bed, thinking that it would waste less wood that way. Research finished smithing. This is so big. This is, this is massive. This is the one thing we've been working to for, for what feels like... Well, it has been days. There's no what feels like at all. So, now if we build ourselves, if we go into medieval, we want ourselves... What is it? A blacksmith smelter? No, it wasn't a smelter, was it? Um, was it a... Wait, no, maybe it was. What have we got? We've got a blacksmith's forge, blacksmith's smelter. Um, there's a basic blacksmith's forge. I don't think we've unlocked anything new. Why do I feel like we've unlocked nothing new here? Um, does that add a bill to it? No. Blacksmith's forge. Um, make steel. Make steel. Nothing. Am I insane? Let me, let me double check this. Of course it would put it here. Right, okay. Um, rather than put it in the medieval tab, you know, where everything else is medieval. Oh, God, it's one of those buildings that you can't really rotate. Uh, well, I suppose it sort of works. Looks a bit ugly, though. Um, fine, we'll build this. I mean, I guess also in here. Um, yeah, and that really doesn't work when you rotate it. We'll reinstall this stone cutters table. Um, I don't know, literally anywhere. It really doesn't matter that much. And then we'll put the forge at the top near the other fucking 15 forges we've got going on right now. At this point, I'm just having to build blocks because apparently the forges do need some blocks there. So, Patches, if you could do that instead. Thank you very much. Right, so, granite, blacksmith, anvil, and forge. There we go. Okay. Um, the only issue is that door is now completely pointless. So, I might have to move one of the reset... Oh, hang on. Let's do this instead. There we go. No, no, no. Hang on. Reinstall. There we go. That makes way more sense. And then reinstall that one there as well. Man, finally we can make some steel and hopefully make some weapons as well. That wouldn't hurt. Even if we could just make the most basic weapons, that would be absolutely fine. So what can we do with this one then? So we can, will actually let me add these bills now for one. So wood, steel. Uh, make a steel bow requires 20 steel. So actually that was a, a ridiculous amount then. That was actually kind of OP. To make royal plate boots, it's 35 steel. I'm going to get rid of that. I, I feel like it's only fair that I should delete that one. That's my own fault for not checking whether or not the quarry worked. All right, let's see what we've got in store here then. Please, at least let me build a bow. Or anything. I'll take anything. At least let me forge steel, seeing as that's been the whole point of this entire campaign. We need wood. Oh my god, are we out of... Oh, there we go. Thank you, dog. Right. Smelt steel from iron. Holy shit, that's so good. Smooth bore musket. That doesn't seem right. Uh, short bow. Oh, there we go. There we go. Finally, we're good. We're in the game now, team. So smelt uh, steel from iron requires 30 iron. Fine. An iron carbon metal alloy used for building huge variety of structures, weapons, and machines. Absolutely, we want to do that. Um, requires 30 iron. What do we get out of it? We get 20 steel. Okay, sure. So that, that's a pretty all right ratio. Three to one. Um, let's go for two to three. <laughs> two, two, two steel to three iron is what I'm getting at. Um, three to one. Good one. Okay, let's make... Um, I guess it's just going to have to be a multiple of... Uh, we could just do 30, I guess, in that case. That works. No, 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 40. We didn't want to do 40. Do until we have 40, seeing as things are apparently fairly cheap when it comes to the steel cost. Um, unpause when we... No, no, unpause when we have 40. Do it up to 80. It's probably a much safer idea. There we go. Right, pause when satisfied. That's fine. And we need somebody actually working the forge now, uh, which will be Patches. Patches, what are you doing right now? Um, moving some stuff. Smelting iron from steel. Jesus Christ, this entire campaign has led up to this moment. Here we go. Boom. Our first custom-produced steel. I'm so happy with that. Right, so let's actually start making some weapons as well. So, short bow, 30 wood. Don't know why we need a forge for that. You tell me. Not entirely sure why we couldn't have just made that on the floor, but there we go. So, we can make... Can, wait, can we make it out of plasteel, though? We fucking can. You guys lied to me. Whoever that was in the comment section, you've lied to me. On the plus side, though, it means with the god rock, we could make an entire set of royal armor for, for Bonnet Bigley. Because how much will each one of these yield? It's like, what, 30 or something like that? Um... We don't really have that much, though, do we? Is it going to give me a count? Yeah, 18. Um, we might just be able to... I want to leave some behind for decorative purposes. Oh, my God. We can make a morning star. I'm in. We can make everybody a morning star. That's incredible. Um, I need to take a look at the sort of weapons to get an idea for what is a good weapon to have here. So, that's uh, damage. I assume that's damage per second. 8.41. Um, lower chance to hit, though. So, that's 7.5% extra chance to hit. Lower chance to hit, probably because it's a goddamn morning star. Um, medieval longsword. Basically the same DPS, but actually a higher chance to hit and higher armor. So, you definitely make the longswords over the morning star. The only downside is more steel, more wood. Understandable. Hand tools. We need hand tools. Oh, halberds. They've got to be good, right? Melee hit chance plus 10%. That's massive. Um, 
8.18, but they are quite expensive too. Holy shit, this is cool. Climals. You'd imagine they do more damage. Oh my god, a bearded axe. Yes, that's what we give to the dwarf. There's so much to see. I'm actually not sure which is uh, which is the best one here. Used in the construction of an arbalist. So an arbalist is like almost like an automatic crossbow to some extent. A big, quite high-powered one. Um, might be a bad call. I don't know why we can make a, a gun, though. That seems a bit odd. War knife, as one as you point out. Uh, Krieg Messer. That's the word I couldn't remember yesterday. 9.33 with the warhammer. That's cool. I think that's probably the highest DPS one, isn't it? 9.33. Um, I very much doubt we're going to find anything bigger than that. So I think we'll make ourselves, we'll make one, let's give everybody their own sort of signature weapon. We'll make a warhammer. Um, 8.63, we'll make ourselves a war knife. We'll make ourselves a halberd and a very standard long, you know, you know what? We want a morning star. We want to be like the Ninja Turtles. Everybody's got to have their own thing. Obviously, Bonnet already has his weapon. Probably want some ranged weapons too. Um, maybe just make a bunch of steel bows. Uh, bowmen are still used... In the construction of either a crossbow or an arbalist. Right, okay. So, I was going to say, it wouldn't make much sense if you make an actual bow out of steel. Seeing as steel isn't exactly very bendable by uh, human means. So, we'll just make some regular bows then in the meantime. So, let's go back to... Was it this one where we make bows? Yeah, here we go. Right, so make uh, one, two, three, four, five regular short bows. That way we can give people bows as and when they need them. Apparently, one of you said use something a mod called Simple Side Art, something along those lines, that allow you to have a weapon, like a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. Would be a good idea to have the both. It would make sense as well. It's not like you can't just uh, carry a bow or a sword in a sheath. Um, bow on your back, sword in a sheath. Yeah, that's fine. That, that seems like a good set setup. I was doing a bit more farm planning. I figured it's probably time we get some cotton, right? So we can actually make some, you know, basic armor, brigandines, gambesons, that type of thing. I think a brigandine's made of leather, actually. Exotic goods trader. Hello. How are you? Have we got anyone we recognize? Um, no, to answer that question. Not that I can see here. Uh, yeah, no, they all just look like generic sort of elf names. Sweet, welcome. Right, let's see what we've got for them. Bonnet Bigly, you shall meet them graciously and try and buy all of their shit. Oh man, we've got 20 steel still kicking around. So, what, what is happening then? So, Potts is cooking and jerking meat. Who, who is our crafter? Is it not Potts? Um, crafting is Patches. Oh, so Patches is both the miner and the crafter, right? I can see the see the confusion here. Jimbo is also capable of smithing. You know what? I think we just want one smith. Because if we get weapons of varying quality, it's going to be kind of shitty. Because then we're also going to be having people prefer to do certain things. Everybody can do quarry four. That can be their lowest one. But we do need to bring some more raw resources into the uh, the actual quarry here. So Jimbo, what else are you doing? Um, Jimbo is fishing. Honestly, Jimbo, is as useful as that is, I would prefer you quarrying right now, my friend. I think that would be a bit more handy to have some more stuff going on. Right, so we'll do that one. Um, construct, construct, then you can fish. Fishing can be, is, is a really good backup job to have. So if you can't mine, uh, maybe we should even put quarry lower down as well. Because quarrying he'll do infinitely. Mining he'll obviously only do what we designate. So I feel like it's a better plan having quarry right at the bottom for everyone. Um, we'll do that one. Mining is only for... Let's do it that way around. Yeah. That, that's good, because that way if you can't smith, he'll mine. And that's generally what we want there. So, Vein Miner, let's designate that one so we get Jimbo and Patches on it. Uh, we'll just do that one for now. I don't want them getting too much, because obviously I would like this stuff crafted. Bonnet, meet our elf friends. So what have you got, traders? Let's see what they've got. Alright, so they do have advanced components. Uh, excuse me, you're breaking my immersion. Mage Bell, dispel heat. Teaches an arcane user how to create a temporary window into the plane of ice, creating a temporary cooling source. It's very temporary, mind. Um, the Primitive Spear. In brackets, Nan. The black bow, in brackets, Leg. Um, this bow is rumored to be of the primary weapon of the warlord known as Torvald. It's a legendary item. That's cool. Um, smoothbore musket. Yeah, muskets seem a bit odd, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like a, excuse me, the God King's Throne. Nice. <laughs> uh, they're not interested in buying anything, unfortunately, so we can't get ourselves a God King's Throne. Holy shit, we need it. Oh, we just need a personal computer? What? Wh what mod is adding that? That's so odd. Weird. Uh, might just be some base game remod that's been avoided by some of the other mods we've got going on. Uh, God King's Throne. Yeah, absolutely. Can we... Man, it's a real shame they're not wanting to buy anything from us, because I would, I would really like that, if you don't mind. Um, how can we very quickly get some... What if we mine, like, this jade? Maybe they'd buy that. Have we got any, like, silver mines? Like, silver veins on the map somewhere? Uh, let's see... Not that I can spot with my eye. Um, yeah, there's nothing at all, is there? Shit. 
Damn it, the God King's throne is right there. Well, we're, we're gonna have to kill them. We're gonna, we're just gonna have to kill them all, right? No, obviously I'm kidding. Let's let's not try and fight many, many different elf mages who are all very heavily armed by the looks of it. Real shame with that. Oh, speaking of which, how are we doing with the dwarf? Uh, it'd be a real shame if we didn't get. Oh shit! I actually thought he joined us then. 0 0.7. We'll, we'll get him. So we'll get him tomorrow. I promise you that. Right. So how are we doing then? Patches is currently making hand tools. Great start. So that's going to allow us to hopefully make those pots, which we can use for freezing purposes because the freezer is still 20 degrees you know what heat wave 21 degrees freezer actually could have been a lot lot worse i like your i like your reindeer as well there we go right crafting station um we can make lots of there we go storage pot we need adobe brick how the hell do we make adobe brick so we've got crossbow medieval grenades oh made of lime i see right explosive pot drinking cup regular crossbows composite bows there wood pitch glue oh adobe bricks 15 hay Thank God we've got this hay grown then, which is almost grown as well. 78%. It's grown at 160%. Jesus, that's quite quick. All right, so we should have that in no time. Maybe another plot of hay wouldn't go amiss then if we need it for bricks and that type of thing. I imagine you can build adobe structures. That's what adobe was used for, right? Um, although I'm sure it was like dried mud rather than hay, but maybe that's just part of it. Um, we could build big adobe structures rather than building everything out of wood. Probably not a bad plan, because somewhere a lot less fireproof as well. Not a fan of having a forge inside a wooden room with a wooden floor. Um, gift. <laughs> gift from the woodland domain of elves. They've left us cloth invulnerable hobbit pants and a wolfskin elf helmet. Though that's pretty cool. Thank you. Were they really that? Are they that friendly with us? Hang on, can we see their factions? They're the woodland elves. Um. Blue Plain Covenant, they hate us, they're a savage tribe, so that's understandable. The Arcane Fold are kind of a bit friendly with us. Followers of the States, plus two neutral. Um, Medieval Society, the Crown Mantis, is not big fans of us. The Shadow Crew, uh, really not happy with us at all, but then again, they are called the Shadow Crew. Hey, look at that. The Elven King Mudan and his Elven Woodland Domain there, plus ten. This is the right one, isn't it? Yeah, there's only one of each. Um, man, the, the High Council of Elves really, really like us. Same with the Dwarfs. All the Dwarfs are big fans of us. This is cool. We've got like a really clear set of friends and enemies. That helmet is really good. All right, who gets that one then? As our finest warrior, I feel like Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne, is going to get the the helmet. Just check, 1.3, so 4 point... Yeah, no, it's going to be patches here. Seeing as the king already has a crown, you get this one, my friend. The Hobbit Pants of... What is this invulnerability? What does that do? Gives them, funnily enough, uh, well, 150 max points to the actual gear, though. 110% move speed for a guy that's going to be moving around a lot. No, 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 drop those. You can wear them, honestly. They're, those are for you, my friend. Um, it dropped his light pants. Maybe his light pants were better. And so we've got so Coastal Haven of Elves sending some stuff over. It just gives movement speed. Um, Bonnet, what have you got, then? He's got uh, Cloth Pants of Discovery, which increase... Oh, they increase the research speed. Well, that's pretty appropriate. More Elves. Hello. Um, do we recommend, do we recognize any of our people? Is Elrang with them, maybe? That'd be so cool if it was High King Elrang for one of the elf factions. Holy shit, what a callback. Simple meat right away in storage while it was only simple. Doesn't matter too much. An exo another exotic goods trader at the same time. A lot of merchants popping along. Hello, um, how are you doing? I hope they don't hate one another, otherwise this could be full-out war. Bandit camp as well. Good god, we're getting so many missions coming in at once. Right, trade with these boys, see what they've got. Hello, oh, they actually want to buy things too, this is great. Um, they have for sale... Devil Strand Pants have got uh, nothing particularly interesting here, unfortunately. Ice Blocks, Coal Chunks. Yeah, no, they're just a generic bulk goods trader then. Yeah, a little bit of a shame. We could buy some Huskies. Um, 185 each. We could buy a male and a female. Doesn't matter too much. Same we can't just buy like a... Because we've got a female Labrador. Shame we can't buy a male Husky, but uh, unfortunately doesn't work like that in RimWorld. It's a strange world out here. Right, what have we got? Um, any characters we recognize? Nope. I'm, now that I'm looking for them, they're not going to turn up, are they? Let's see what the High Council of Elves have got in store for us. Remember, these guys love us. So, they are not willing to buy anything, but they do have some crazy shit, though. Combat armor, excellent. A Warlord's mask, Warlord's helmet. Large ice sculpture. Yeah, maybe I'm not going to be buying that. Um, Orb of Conviction, Morningstar. Ki kidneys and livers. Okay, I won't ask questions. Technomancer spell. Advanced components. Probably the World of Magic. That's probably what's adding that. I never considered that it wouldn't be a medieval magic mod. It's just a traditional sort of um, Rimworld magic mod. Man, look at these goddamn elves on my doorstep. Not a fan of this. Just so many of them. One of the best parts about this forge that I didn't point out is actually we can smelt glass from four steel and that would let us put skylights into all of our buildings because right now you've got to remember they are going to have the in darkness debuff here. Um, it's it's a very, very simple fix. So what I might even do then before we do absolutely anything else is go ahead and smelt a shit ton of glass. So what do we need for a skylight on average? Uh, it's just one glass pane. Wait, is glass pane the same as glass? That doesn't seem right. 
Uh, flame, frame of glass used for making sky. You'll assume it's the same thing, right? So let's go ahead and make like five of those things. Apparently, these skylights don't really require too much. Um, oh, they're not that big either. Yeah, we could do with some fairly large ones. Um, one by four. That's probably better because then we could. Wait, one by four. Oh, that's right. So the skylight itself is one by four, but the light it lets in is a larger area. Yeah, no, this one is probably the best one because it will cover the the most. Room and it's it's the easiest to stack as well. It's easiest to sort of test light here because it's the, you know, it's a, it's a thinnest shape for quite a thin long room. Um, yeah, I can probably work out a good way to set this up. Anyway, we'll just get a load in advance. I'll do that in between episodes because it's going to be kind of a lot of precise uh, glass placement there. Noli, are you okay? Are we going to get you on board today? I mean, it's just still 30% chance every day of this guy or every every attempt at getting this guy on board. A nearby settlement, Blad, Blad, sorry. Blad or uh, uh, Bladoranand contacts you with a special request. Their fields of okay, so we've got another one of these missions. It's for the High Council of Elves. Honestly, I feel like I probably just should help them. It's straight down this road anyway, so it's not particularly far. What is this? Elf post owned by the Shadow Crew, which I assume are these dudes here. Um, yeah, they are. So we could destroy this outpost, sort of a forward outpost there, kind of a sensible place for an outpost. Uh, three enemies. Honestly, it's kind of tempting. They're going to give us an orb of conviction and we get opinion with the High Council of Elves, which seems like a good ally to have. You know what? We'll leave that for next time because I've still got shelf the Modelist and I think we've overran today anyway. So let's quickly go and do that. For those of you interested in that, uh, we'll check that out now. For those of you who are just here for the gameplay, that will be it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching. And let's dive over to the Modelist then and actually see what we've got going on. What I'm going to do with this, I'll just read it out. So for those of you who are watching on, say, who have only got a single monitor, who are trying to, you know, multitask and do this at once, then, uh, then hopefully this will be of some help. I have disabled the Orc Invasion because when I was testing with the Arrow Log, it was throwing some errors here and there. I might re-enable it, but for now, I think it's definitely going to go off because it was, again, one of the only ones we've actually got ca causing errors here. So, in order, we have Hugslib, Jex Tools, Mod Manager, Prepare Carefully, Humanoid Alien Races, Complex Jobs, Hospitality, Medical Tab, Quality Builder, Pawns Are Capable, uh, Fishing, that's r the, the Rainbow Flambe version, um, Again, I'll link to the collection as well, so if you don't want to follow this along, by all means, follow that one instead. Ogre Stack, Stone Cutting, Skilled Stone Cutting, uh, Dub Skylights, Faction Discovery, Area Unlocker, Replace Stuff, Pharmacist, Blueprints, Animal Tab, Tilled Soil, Giddy Up Core, Training Spot 1.0, Edie Embrasures, Doormat, Giddy Up Ride and Roll, Giddy Up Caravan, Giddy Up Battle Mounts, VGP Vegetable Garden, Mad Skills, Allow Tool, Just Ignore Me Passing, Pick Up and Haul, Run and Gun, Realistic Rooms, Color coded mood bar, dubs mint menus, locks, quarry, rename colony, deconstruct return fix, mass graves, erg you got me, <laughs> rim hub, clearly have enough, linked doors, rain washes away filth, vein miner, gloomy furniture, colony manager, realistic planets, where is my weapon, infused, less rebuff, research pelt, draggable corners, impassable chest deep water, a rim of magic, animal gear, animal gear basic, medieval times, nature is beautiful, Palisades, Powerful Faction Bases, Road of the Rim, RPG Style Inventory, Run and Hide, Stackable Chunks, Vanilla Security Expanded, literally just for the Arbalest there, Doors Expanded, uh, Lord of the Rims the Third Age, Change Research Speed, Lord of the Rims Elves, Lord of the Rims Hobbits, Lord of the Rims Dwarfs, More Faction Interaction, Red Dragon, Wim, Rim Quest, Rim... <sighs> Jesus Christ, Prison Labour and Set of Camp. There we go. That's the entire list. So that's my mod order. That's how I've got it set up now. And like I said, we will double check the, uh, the error log even right now after basically playing for a couple of hours here. We've got a couple of errors. Um, oh no, we actually had one error. Which is just could not find a pack for a baby deer. So one of the animals that the elves turned up in didn't have a backpack. And that's basically what that means. Um... Yeah, that's entirely it. So one error in that entire sort of half an hour playthrough there. Well, for me, it was more like close to an hour. But there we go. So hopefully you will get something stable. If it still doesn't work after all of this, I honestly don't know what to suggest. I mean, as you can see from the error log, it's, it's working fine for me. It's just remod. Honestly, the, the the mod manager in it is kind of a little bit shitty. They have said that for the next patch of remod, they're going to add a lot to the sort of optimization of mods on that end. So hopefully that makes things and series like this a lot easier in the future. Good luck with getting your setup, and I will go and give a shout out to all of the patrons for making this series possible. Probably should have done that first then, in hindsight, eh? Big shout out to Big Dick Timmy, Tom Terrier 18, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Lawrence, Haydog, Sidini, Necrofilin, Asuna Kirito, Facundo Vasquez, Croesus, I'm the Lizard King, Jocelyn Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Tyler Birch, Powers Presley, Logan Thorne, Conspiracy, Orcs Wolf, Average Gamer 419, Escape, and Jackson Whitman. For the support, the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you very much for your help. 
And as well, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Euphrates, Jimmy, Quez Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Van Ders, Luan and Thomas, Nathan Flores, Joran De Vries, Don Connie 2 and 7, Zet McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Will Wade, Chris, Sir Thor the Swede, The Sage, Asro, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Igor Kozak, Haji Dumar, Noah Gallimore, Panther Pearl, and Alphys Guffin. I've had to read another goddamn list today. I think I'm going mad.